Mike Tedeschi, Portfolio Manager over at Perspective Wealth Planning. We're going to be taking a look at the head and shoulders pattern in today's video. We are going to be taking a look at the potential head and shoulders top that we have here on the S&P 500. And we're also going to historically take a look at a couple of other similar setups that the S&P 500 has had here over the last 20, 25 years. First and foremost, let's define what a head and shoulders top or head and shoulders pattern is. You have a shoulder which is lower than the head, and then on the other side of the chart, you have another shoulder which is about the same height. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. No, 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 this is the textbook view of it, and we all know that the real life does not work exactly like it does in the textbook. Now, what you'll notice is key about this pattern is this neckline. Okay. The neckline is your confirmation. When you break below the neckline, that's when you start to open up to the downside. If we do not break below the neckline, this is not a legitimate pattern. So it's one of those things that has to be confirmed. Now, if you do break below the neckline, you get a target from something that's called a measured move. You take the head to the neckline and you duplicate that same drawing and move it over. And that gives you up your approximate target to the downside. So if we take a look right now here on the S&P 500, over the last year, this is May of 2021, we have essentially given back all of the move because here we are today. We have done it with the setup of that potential head and shoulders top. So there's your left shoulder, your head, and your right shoulder, right? These are similar heights. This is above those two, and you have a very well-defined neckline that's right here. And it's that 4,100 to 4,000 level that we've talked so much about here over the last year. Now remember, this pattern doesn't mean anything unless you break below that zone. If you break below that zone, then you're going to get a, a much lower target. Now, textbook would say you get about 4,800 right here, 4,100, 4,000 level. You're about 7, 800 points below that breakdown spot, which would put your target somewhere in that you know 3,300 to 3,200 level. I still think there's a major level of support above that, right in around that 3,600, which was the breakout from November of last year. So if we were to make that break, I would think that would be a better target than the full textbook measured move definition back to 3,200. Regardless of where it goes, a move underneath of here would be very bad for the overall market based on this particular chart setup. Now, let's go back and take a look at three other instances of those head and shoulder potential tops. And unfortunately, what we're going to have to start with is we're going to start with the dot-com bubble. All right, we come back in here. You can very clearly see, once again, we've got that rounded type top. You got a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder, and your big important neckline that's right here. We break below that zone, we do back test it, and then ultimately we do, we do as you know, end up roll lower. All right, so uh, we, we know how that ultimately played out. The next area of concern actually comes to the other area of time that nobody likes to talk about, and that would be that 2007-2008 zone. And here we are with a multi-year head and shoulders setup. In fact, there's two on this chart, really. There's this zone right in here, and I'll, uh, I'll look at it like this. Head, shoulders, shoulders, right? And then there's the bigger left shoulder, head, and right shoulder neckline break here. So there's actually two of those that play out, one over the course of a year and a year and a half, the other that plays out over the course of like three years. Regardless, we make that breakdown, um, as you guys know. Now, here's the good news, because this is a very similar setup that we have to right now, all right? Big crash, we had that big crash in 2020. Huge rally off the bottom, we had that huge rally off the bottom in 2021. And then that sideways action, but it does set up with that head and shoulders pattern. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline. This is a very similar setup to what we have right now. Again, crash into a big rally, into a sideways move, and a major level of support that spans a year. This does not break lower. This ultimately breaks higher as you can see we push to the upside we negate that head and shoulders top so what do we have to do where we're currently at to negate this head and shoulders top well for starters it would be very good to get back up over that 4300 level that is our near-term resistance zone that is that big pop that we had into the FOMC and then faded immediately afterwards the next level on the chart that's important is right around that 4,500 zone. But what's really key to negating this head and shoulders top is to get back up over this high. 
If we get back up over this high and we're back up somewhere in this zone, it completely negates that pattern. And instead of being in a head and shoulders topping pattern, we're probably more in a sideways market, right? And those big, long sideways markets, those are where you can get those explosive breakouts to the upside. Bottom line, what happens here is extremely important. We are going to be paying very, very close attention to this level this week because a break below that does give you that potential head and shoulders confirmation. And that is not what the bulls want to see. If we're able to hold on to this zone and start bouncing up, we have those key levels that we're going to be paying attention to in the chart. As always, I hope you guys stay safe out there. And if you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me at mtedeski at perspectivewealthplanning.com or you can give me a call at 814-580-9881. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Take care. Mm -hmm.